this is one they could easily beat. Hey, Shalom, Most High Christ Bless. This is Officer Simakaya with IUIC Chicago. We're going to do a quick class. The title of the class is Assumptive Reasoning Disrupts Unity. Assumptive Reasoning Disrupts Unity. Let's pull up that first definition on assumptions. Assumptions, assumptions. So let's read that first definition. Assumption, a thing that is accepted as true or as certain to happen without proof. So when you make an assumption, that's when you, you in your mind, and you make something true, and you don't have no facts. You have no proof, but in your mind, it's facts. Hence, uh, example, uh, a brother or sister walk past you, and in your mind, you think that, they have some ill feelings towards you. They walk past you without saying shalom, whatever the case may be. In your mind, you you create a scenario that, hey, this this brother must, this brother or sister must got something against me because they didn't say shalom. That's an assumption. That's an assumption. It's a thing that is accepted as true or as certain to happen without proof. Uh, and a couple of those, I'm not gonna read all of the uh, similar similar words, but Four of the similar words that I want to highlight. Uh, speculation, surmise, a theory, and a suspicion. Speculation, surmise, theory, and a suspicion. When we're dealing with one another, we can't roll off speculations. We can't roll off theories. This ain't science. You can't have no scientific theory about a brother or sister. You can't have it set in your mind that because somebody um, shrugged their shoulders a certain way that they got something against you. And that's a, a, a wild example, but we can't be like that. We can't have, we can't roll with our thoughts. Get Jeremiah 17 and 9 real quick. Because we, we have to understand that a lot of times when we have evil thoughts about a brother or sister, we have assumptive thoughts. It's based on our upbringing, our destructive upbringing that we had as children. So we, we put, let's say, our parents or our brothers or sisters or some friends that we grew up with treated us a certain way. We was bullied. And, you, and that stuff, that, just, that stuff destroy your mind. It destroy your subconscious mind because that stuff stay in your subconscious. That's why we got to be in the spirit. But when you have those thoughts, it's based on a previous relationship that you may have had that somebody did you wrong, it broke some trust, it did something like that, and then now you come into this truth, and instead of learning how to apply charity, instead of learning how to uh, take the action on charity and thinking of giving your brother the benefit of the doubt, you automatically pin those thoughts on the brother or sister, and it causes a disruption in the unity because now we can't build. Now you have trust issues. You, you, you go in the corner and sit by yourself. But let's read that scripture real quick. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. So we have to understand this. The Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all things. The heart is deceitful. The heart is deceitful. And a lot of, a lot of people, oh, I, I had a feeling in my heart. And we know that our heart pump blood. Our heart don't have no thoughts. But a lot of our people had that, you know, I felt it in my heart. So it, it got to be true. No, nah, your heart is deceitful. Above all things. Read it again. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And it says it's desperately wicked. If our thoughts don't line up with the scriptures, you can't run with it. You cannot run with it. If you ain't went and talked to a brother or sister about whatever it may be that happened. But you know, we had situations here where we had, it, there's been many situations. But hey, brother walk, approached me. Hey, it's a spirit of hatred here in Chicago. Okay, what happened? Man, I'm just telling you, it's a spirit of hatred. 
okay, what what happened? Like, who, who you got an issue with? I'm just telling you, it's a spirit of hatred here. I'm like, but bro, who, who had it? How you do well, that, this, bro, this brother looked at me, this brother looked at me a certain way. I'm like, bro, uh, he look at everybody like that. What you talking about? Like, you gonna talk to him? No, I just know it. He look at me like, he look at me like this every time I come into school. Did you talk to him? No, man, I'm telling you, I know he got a hatred spirit towards me. You don't know that because you ain't talked to him. You didn't go and talk to him and ask him. And then when you go and do the crazy thing about this particular situation, the brother went and talked to him, and the brother said it wasn't no issue, and he still said, no, nah, he got hatred, he was lying. We can't move like that in this, in this truth. Those are things that we got to push away from us. You got to listen to the counsel. If you come and say there's hate, if there, you come and say that there's a spirit of hatred here, you got to have tangible proof. You can't just say it's in my thought. It's how he looked at me. Is 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 he? When I walked through the door, he turned around and went in the bathroom. You can't. That's not justifiable. If you ain't talked to him and he said, "Yeah, I got an issue with you because you did X, Y, Z," you have no proof. That's an assumption. That's an assumption. You making you making something to be true that you have no proof about. You didn't go. You get you making a theory. You making an educated guess. We can't do that in this truth. Uh, pull up that definition of reasoning. And I want y'all to keep in mind the word suspicion and what was the other word? Surmise. And surmise. Uh, so pull up that de definition. Let's go to the verb of reason. So assumptive reasoning. That's the name of the class. Assumptive reasoning disrupts unity. Uh, go to the, that's the verb. Okay, read that. Reason. Think. Understand and form judgments by a process of logic. Uh, let's read them similarities. Similar. Think rationally. Think logically. Think straight. Use one's mind. Use one's common sense. Use one's head. Use one's brain. Think things through. So now, with these, just using this word here, that's how we, we supposed to think logically. We supposed to think with reason. Think rationally. If a brother did something and I think he had, if not, and I believe that he did something against me, it's my responsibility to go and talk to him and make sure that what my thoughts are is what actually is the case. But when I go talk to him, if he say, no, nah, brother, I, I was going to the bathroom. I didn't I even see you coming in the door. Then my man, I got to be like, you know what? I was tripping. But with this, it says think logically. You're thinking reasonably. You, you're applying some level of charity. You're not thinking the worst of the worst. So now you, but you couple assumptive reasoning with this, you're not thinking rationally. You're thinking off of, you, you come into conclusions without proof. You, you come into conclusions without proof. You got something you want to say? Yeah. That's like, so as y'all hearing this, everything that just came out needs few seconds. That means you got to go back to how you know a person. How does person operate? Okay, I know usually if bro got to go to the bathroom, he pushing everybody out the way. He full speed ahead to the bathroom. So if you came in and he was gunning into the bathroom, he ain't move around when you came in the room. Or he was looking a certain way. You got to know your brother. You got to know the people that you're around, basically. But you will do this stuff here when you don't know people. And that happens when you don't come around. So you're gonna play with all these little silly thoughts in your mind and create scenarios. Yep. So go pull that definition back up. Let's read them, some more of them synonyms real quick before we go on. Cogitate. I don't know what that mean. You know what that mean? <laughs> same thing as thinking. It's the okay. same thing as think. thinking. Thinking. Mean, Intellectualize. Too deep to me. Intellectualize. Go ahead. Put on one's thinking cap. Put on one's thinking cap. Put on your thinking cap. That's a that's a old old term. Put on your thinking cap. So when you dealing with when we as we we coming in and we coming in, of course we all got we all understand we have different we come from different backgrounds. So with that you can't you can't you can't make judgments or criticisms or assumptions based on something somebody does based on how you were brought up, because we were all brought up differently. But us, but us coming together, we have to learn each other, because 
when you learn each other, you learn, oh, that's just how he don't mean, he just, he just rough. Okay, my brother rough. He don't mean no harm to me if he, if he uh, shrug his shoulders or he do certain things. He don't mean no harm. It's just something that, something he working on. And he don't mean it. He don't mean nothing specific towards me because he look mean. Because he look, he may look mean all the time. That don't mean that it's directed towards you. You can't take it personal. We can't be all touchy feely. Uh, go pull the definition back up. Hey, I was, go ahead. I know you gave the example, and people might be like, that's petty. People do catch spirits over salutes. Yeah. Well, you know, when I saluted them, he ain't. Brothers really, men really do this stuff over salutes. I didn't seen this stuff. See? Man, that ain't, you know, I walked over there, and then, you know, he ain't salute me. Had, had yeah. He saluted him over there. You know, yeah. he did like, he did me like this and just looked the other way. Bro, come on, man. Y'all be being sensual. That's what the scripture call it, meaning emotional. Yep. Then this, this, another. Uh, just these are these are small examples, but it's in, we gonna go. We gonna keep going. But um, and it's another situation. It's just, this is another small situation. This is when, before we, we was in our older school. There was a brother, brother, one brother sitting in a chair. The other brother sitting in a chair. The chair. This is we was a smaller school. Chairs was kind of tight. So a brother got to get up and go to the bathroom. He stepped on my shoe and didn't say excuse me. And he did it on purpose because he didn't say excuse me. Did you talk to him, bro? No, I know he, 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 I know he felt he stepped on my shoe. Like, come on, bro. How you know he, he could have thought it was a cup or something. He could have thought it was, he could have thought he hit the, the corner of the chair. Like, go and talk to him. Maybe he didn't realize he stepped on your foot. No, no, I'm telling you, he stepped on my foot and then looked at me. Did you talk to him? No, I ain't talked to him. And I'm, it it, it sounds like it's, it sounds like I'm making it up. It sounds like it's something small, but this is, this is, I actually heard this complaint. And I'm like, bro, if you didn't go talk to him and confirm that he knew that it was your foot and he knew that he was stepping on your foot and he did it intentionally, you can't, you, you can't run with that. And long story short, it, was, it wasn't resolved. Another situation. Um, Brother was eating. It's an older brother in comparison to a younger brother. The younger brother reaches over him while he eating, reaches over his food. Don't the, the another situation. He didn't say nothing to him. That was disrespectful because he reached, he reached up. This is this is why I say it's a spirit of, spirit of hatred here in Chicago. He reached over my food and didn't say, excuse me. You don't reach over nobody's food. Did you talk to him? No, I ain't talked to him. You're supposed to know that. Like, bro, everybody don't have the same upbringing. Maybe he didn't realize, maybe he wasn't brought up to understand that you're not supposed to reach over somebody's food. Go and talk to him. No, everybody know that. That's, a, that's, a, uh, that's common sense. Bro, go and talk to him and ask him because everybody don't know that. We all didn't grow up learning those same things. No solution because he didn't want. He wanted to run with. The, uh, he wanted to run with it, and now the brother ain't here. Because it's a, it's a, and, and and I hate to say it, but all of these examples is the same brother. Right. All of these examples is the same brother, and it's, it's the same story over the course of some years. It was always the same story. It was a complaint, this, that, and the third. No facts. Disappear for five, six months. Mm -hmm. Come back. Be, be, be congregating with us for three, four months. Same thing. Hey, such and such happened. Did you go talk to him? No. Nah. Every time I come in, it's like, bro, you still ain't repenting. You still, you, you still got this spirit on you? And now the brother gone. I don't know what's going on with him. No, nah, you know what? I hate, I'm, I'm going to bring it up. I know what's wrong with him. When we first started our radio show, the brother was in the comments talking about we got hatred. Damn. But we're going to move on. You got something? Yeah, I was just going to say, spirits like that, they love contention and they exactly. love strife. Exactly. They're not solution-based or solution-minded. They try to find evil somewhere because there's something in them, but they want to find evil in you or in other people. Yeah. Spirits like that, they love contention and they're not about unity and you really don't believe in God. That's really what that is. You're so caught up in your own emotions or your own mind 
you don't have the care or the charity to think about upon others to even be solution or come up with a resolution. Yep. Okay. Yep. So get Sirach chapter 11 and verse 7 real quick. Sirach chapter 11 and verse 7. Because a spirit like that is not interested in building unity. Because he, he's so assumptuous, it's assumptive and presumptuous. You do come into conclusions without proof. Don't want to come to no resolves with nobody. You're not trying to. You're not trying to create unity. You're trying to. You're trying to destroy what the Most High building, and that and hence that's when people like that not gonna last. Either something. Either something's gonna happen to where they get embarrassed in front of the whole congregation, or they're just gonna phase out. I'll read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter eleven and verse seven. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. The scriptures say, blame not. Before thou hast examined the truth. That's put on your thinking cap. Okay, this brother stepped on my shoe. You know what? Let me go and ask him. Hey, man, let me go and tell him. Hey, you stepped on my shoe when you came. When you stepped out the aisle. You actually you stepped on my shoe. I'm pretty sure it was an accident, but I just want to let you know you stepped on my shoe. Oh, my bad. You get a brother opportunity to say, hey, man, my bad. I didn't I ain't know that was your shoe. I, my bad. I, I, I'll make sure I'm more careful next time. Peace. Now we can build. We can continue. These are small examples. It's, it's grander things that happen, but these are small things, but you have to, it says, blame not before thou hast examined the truth. Do not jump to conclusions without proof. Read. Understand first and then rebuke. Understand what's going on first and then rebuke. If a brother reach over your food, check with him. He might not, he might not, have, you might be an older brother. Sometimes the older brothers, you you know what I'm saying? You grew up, I'll say, what, about 30, over 30, maybe over 35. You learned that when you was growing up. But somebody that's 21, 22, they might not have heard that never in their life. So, but but if, you, if they do it and you tell them, you just taught your brother something, so now he won't do it to nobody else. And these are small things. This ain't nothing that's sin, but these are the small, petty things that happens that cause a disruption in the unity. And it's not even, and think about it, it's not even sin. That's some Pharisee type stuff. It's not even sin. It's something small, but you will cause strife over something petty. When all you got to do is tell your brother, hey man, make sure you don't reach over my, make sure, make sure you don't reach over nobody's food. That's that's considered rude. It's, it's rude. You got to make mind for that. And brother, oh man, my bad. I didn't think of it like that. Understood. I got you. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be more thoughtful. Make sure I don't, you know, just explain it to him. Like, man, you can have hair on your, you can have hair on your shirt, and it could drop in somebody's food. Whatever the case may be, you communicate it so that they, that way, a brother know how he should move. Uh, read on. You got something? I was just gonna say. So we got situations happening based off people' personal preference. Exactly. That's what they getting offended over. They preferences or what they think, not. Again, like the officer said, not sin, personal preference. So read on. Verse, verse 8. Answer not before thou hast heard the call. So now when you are in that moment of conflict resolution, you are in the moment of finding out what's going on, you hear the whole, hear the person, hear the person out fully. Now, if they're trying to talk to you in circles, that's another story. If, they, if you ask them a question, hey, uh, why did you go through this exit door right here? And they started talking about, man, well, you know what I'm saying? I was at work on Monday, and this Edomite in my job, my super now, now don't, don't let them take you to, around the street and, you know what I'm saying, around the, to, 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 to the moon and then back and then to the sun. Then you, hey, bro, could you get to the point? Could you, could you answer the question that I asked you? That's what, when they say answer not before thou hast heard the cause, you got to be talking, you got to be, if I ask you a question, you got to answer the question I ask you. Don't take me around, uh, uh, what's the, what's, what's the, ah, it's on the tip of my tongue. Not nah, beating around the bush, but it's a, uh, it's one of them slick scenes, one of the movies around 79th Street or something. I'm going to keep going. Read on. Answer not before thou hast heard the cause. Neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. Neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. So if you, if you establish in the matter with your brother, you're trying to get to the bottom of something, you're applying Matthew 18, 
if y'all discussing and the, and the discussion is on the matter at hand, let, hear your brother out before you cut in and bump in and you don't, you listen to understand, not listen to speak. Because that's what this would be. If you, ans if you answering before you heard the calls, you're not trying to hear your brother out. You're trying to get your agenda across. You're not even trying to hear what your brother got to say. You're not trying to hear his explanation of why he may have done things, why, what his thought process is. You just want to get your point across. We can't be like that. It says, answer not before thou hast heard the call, neither inter interrupt men in the midst of their talk. Uh, from there, go to... Uh, so real quick, I'm going to read my note. It says, without facts, you cannot draw up a conclusion about a situation. If you have no facts, don't jump to no conclusion because you don't have facts. What you, all you're doing is being presumptuous. You're being evil. You're evil speak, you're, you have an evil suspicion if you roll like that. Um, and these are some more examples. I think I st said the other two. Uh, like we, you know what I'm saying, we in Chicago. Our school is, in a, is located in a place where parking kind of slim. So if you got the thought process that, oh, they blocked me in on purpose, referring to another member that come to the school with you in the, in the area where the parking is tight and your mindset is, oh, they parked too close and they did it on purpose, something ain't right with your spirit. Something is not right with your spirit. Because your, your first thought is, oh, they blocked me in and they parked too close so I can't, so I'm going to have, so I have problems getting out. Did you talk to the brother? Did you talk to the sister, whoever it was? No, I just know they did it because they did it three weeks in a row. But did you ask them if they did it on purpose? I'm like, we, like the parking is tight all over here. You see all these cars. No, I know they're doing it on purpose. All right. Whatever. Well, if that's what you think. All right, maybe you need to park around the corner somewhere. You mind if I pull a precept ahead, concerning that spirit? Let me get uh, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 17. Because spirits like that, again, it goes back to that, that spirit, that love strike. But some brothers, they always think, or sisters, they always think that they're right in their own cause. And they never consider the next person. And I'm going to show you what spirit that is. Read that. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 17. He that is first in his own cause. So when you go to leadership or you go to a person, you always think you're right. You always think that you know, oh, he did this because of that. Or this happened because of this. It always seems, especially even when you're dealing with a matter as a leader, the first person they say something, like, hey, man, you know, such and such dealing with this. He that comes with his cause first, they always seem to be right. Or either that person think that they're right. Read on. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just. Go ahead. But his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. But when you go and talk to that other person, that might not actually be the case. Or as a leader, you go and speak to this person and you, get the, you hear both matters or both calls, that ain't actually the case. But because you're so thirsty to, uh, to draw up a conclusion and you assumptive, you're an assumptive reasoner, you always think you're right. And when things don't go your right, oh, oh it's hatred in the body. Yep. Oh, this person hate me. He feels some type of way. And it's an assumptive spirit. And what that does, it drives division and disorder between brethren. Yep. yep. Hey, you got to think, bro. Who finna wake up in the morning and say, you know what? That Negro, uh, uh, brother so-and-so, soldier so-and-so, whomever, when I see his car, I'm going to box his ass in. Who wakes up in the morning and think, <laughs> like, come on. They be coming up with, with uh, universal picture movie stories in their head. Like somebody is, they dead set on making your day hard. Come on, man. Y'all got to stop doing it. That's, that's a pessimistic spirit. Uh, go back to Jeremiah 17. Revert. Let's read 9 and 10 together. Because if, 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 if somebody appears to be doing something, it's your duty to go and talk to them to get the facts of why they doing it. Because what, because what you're doing, not only are you, you, you getting rid of the, 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 the spirit of being, assumptu a, a, a being presumptuous, you're getting rid of that evil thought, you actually learning something about your brother or sister. 
So now you, you, you go and talk to them, you see how they think, you see how they move. So now you understand, you understand a little, a, little bit of, a little bitty piece about how they act and how they see things. So now you're able to, if, let's say somebody else come in and they had that thought, you'd say, no, nah, not, not, not such and such because they're not like that. They, that's not, they not, um, they not malicious. You're able to defend them because you know you've experienced, you actually talked to them. You got to know that, that you, you, had, you got to know that part about your brother or sister. That's how we build unity. But if you were in the spirit or you, you run it with, um, with poofs of smoke, with thoughts that don't mean nothing, you're disrupting the unity. You're disrupting us building unity. You're causing strife and division. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. So the scripture said that the heart is deceitful above all things. Read. And desperately wicked. And it's desperately wicked. Our thoughts will lead us down a wrong path if we do not match it up with the scriptures. Our, we cannot trust in our thoughts. It's like the scriptures say in Isaiah 55. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. and His ways are higher than our ways. We have to filter our thoughts through the Bible. And if it don't line up, we got to throw that in the garbage. Plain, point blank, period. Read. Who can know it? Uh-huh. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. So the most I said, he searched the heart. And he tried the reins. So he searched our mind. He searched what we think. He searched our thoughts. But then read on. Even to give every man according to his ways. According to his ways, meaning according to what we actually do. Because all of us are going to have some evil thoughts. But the thing is, are you acting on those thoughts? Are you doing, if, you, if, you battle, if you're a brother that battle with being a thief, you might have a thought like, man, I want to I take that, that $20 I've seen in that brother wallet. But if you subdue your, you subdue, you subdue that thought and don't do it, you turn away and go away. Like man, you know what? I got to. I'm gonna go home so I don't fall into that seat. You you don't do that. You don't act out that thought. Then the Most High gonna judge you based on your action, what you did. You flee from sin because you know you struggle with that, so you got away from it. If you're a brother that deal with lust, and you you in a um, you in an enclosed room in a Big booty Judy come walking in the door. You like, uh, you know what? Let me get the hell up out of here. The most high, because you you the, you see her, the thoughts come to your mind. You know, let me get out of here before I do something I don't need to be doing. The most high gonna judge you according to you getting your ass up and walking out that door. Meaning you're gonna be justified because you didn't act on that lust. You didn't act on that thought. Cause our thoughts, the the evil thought gonna come. But it's what you do with that thought. Is you gonna is you gonna yield to it and be like, mm, man, I thought it. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta fulfill that thought. No, you gotta, you gotta apply the commandments. Um, we finish verse ten, right? No, sir. Read. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways. To give and, every man according to his ways. Read. And according to the fruit of his doing. And according to the fruit of his doing, meaning. That you get judged by your actions. So in the cases, the many examples, we get, you get, if an issue arises with a brother or sister where you think that they got something against you, where you think that they, they may have done something to, um, to be ill towards you, it's your responsibility to go and check with them. Get Matthew chapter 5 and, dang, I ain't write it down. I thought I wrote it down. Matthew 5 and I think it's 24. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 24. Leave there thy gift before 23. the... Start verse, 23. Verse 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee. So if you go before the Most High in prayer, you finna go send up prayers, you finna go send up your, your, your morning prayer, your afternoon prayer, and there when you do that, you, you think about it that, man, you know what? I think my brother got something against me. What do he say do? Read. Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. Before you go send up them prayers, he said, go, go do what? Go thy way and do what? First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. And this is actually, and this is actually, if it actually is an issue between your brother. 
But even if you had that thought, you should go and see if your brother, see if there's an issue so that you can make, uh, so you can resolve that issue and then you can go before the most high with your conscience clear. That's how we're supposed to move. That's how we build unity. But if you have the thought process that everybody, everybody got something against you, even your, this is another scripture say, even your prayer be as an abomination. If you, I don't think it's a referring to thoughts. I'm tying it to it. But if you, if you got an evil thought towards your brothers and every, every thought in you is evil, you just, you just got malicious thoughts. When you go send up prayers, the most high ain't hearing you. The most high is not hearing you because your, your, your motives are wrong. Your motives are not right. Your motives are unjust. You, your thought, your heart is hell bent on evil. You constantly think evil of your brother. Get 1 Corinthians real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians 13, start at verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4. Charity suffereth long uh -huh. and is kind. Read. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Uh huh. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. So as charity is not selfish. That's a selfish spirit. If, if your thought is that he looked at me, he looked at me like this, he got something against me. And you won't go resolve it, you won't go check. You, you, you being selfish, you thinking about just yourself. You taking things personal. Read. Is not easily provoked. Charity is not easily provoked. Even if, let's say, one, let's say your brother really did have something against you. And he see you and he... Uh, turn around. Your first thought shouldn't be, oh, he got some evil against me. Your thought should be, man, your thought should be to go talk to him. Like, hey, man, everything good? Like, give him the benefit. You have to give him the benefit of the doubt. Hey, you, everything good? I noticed, I noticed the last couple weeks I walk in, you, you turn and go the other way. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think nothing of it at first, but it's like the fourth week in a row, and it's the same thing. Everything good? We everything good with us? We good? And everything, if everything is good, if he say, you know, I mean, everything good. I just, you know what I'm saying, had some stuff on my mind. I wasn't, I didn't see you come in, whatever the case. You resolved the matter. You, you made peace. You cleared the air. But if you just run with it, you don't never go talk to the brother. Now you're going to build, a grudge is going to build up. A grudge based on nothing. <laughs> a grudge based on your thoughts. A grudge based on you assuming something is there. And now you got a grudge towards the brother. And what's that going to do? If you got a grudge towards one brother, that grudge is going to spread towards everybody. Because if somebody else says something to you, what you mean? Why you got to say it like that? Because you got a grudge. You got hatred in your heart. You got hatred in your heart towards one brother. It's going to come out and manifest towards another brother. That ain't even, that it don't just, he, hey, Sloan, bro, why you got to salute me so hard? It, it's going to come out because you got, you holding on to a grudge. Like they say, um... Oh, what's the saying? I ain't, uh, I'm the saying that say if you uh, when you hate somebody, or with the unforgiveness. They say unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die, or something like that. I'm butchering it. It's something like that, right? It's something like that. <laughs> it's, it's something like that. Yours is official now. <laughs> but that's what that's what it is. When you holding the grudge, because especially if you got a grudge, and I, you you shouldn't have to hold a grudge either way. But if you're holding a grudge and you ain't got facts that somebody did something, something is wrong. Something is wrong with you because you don't even have facts. If somebody asks you and say, what happened? All you got to say is, well, he looked at me like this. Did you go talk to him? No, I ain't talked to him. So how you got a grudge towards him? That don't even make sense. You got a grudge towards somebody that you didn't even make contact with to actually see what the issue is, if there is an issue. There's no issue, but you got a grudge. That shows that you ain't walking in the spirit of the Most High. You walking in the spirit of Satan, in a hatred spirit, Cain and Abel. How Esau has a perpetual hatred for us. You walking in that same spirit because you won't even apply the scriptures and go and see if your brother got something against you. And he don't, he walking around, doing, he don't even know he got, he don't even know that you got something against them. It's, cra it's crazy. Hey, pull up that, um, that Instagram. Pull up that Instagram clip. 
Damn, that's it's the up. video. Uh, let me see. That almost sounds like some treachery, almost. Yeah, cause you walking around, the brother uh, thinking he and he on good terms with right. this person. Yep. The person saluting him, dapping him up, probably smiling in his face, but he right. don't know behind closed doors in the brother mind. He like, I hate this nigga. This I know he don't like me. I know, right. but. Every time he see you on Sabbath, New Moon, oh, Shalom. Right. Mm. It's very treacherous behavior. So pull that, pull that video up. Peace to the planet. I want to tell you about something I want you to be aware of. It's called the calcified assumption. This is a con concept I came up with many, many years ago, and it works like this. Me and you were hanging out. I think you were kind of tripping or maybe rude to me or not being as kind as you normally are. And I assume that that's because of X that happened two or three years ago or two weeks ago. Okay. It may change over time the way that I treat you because I start to harden in my assumption, even though that assumption is not based in reality. You may feel this switch and you go, I wonder why Adisa has been weird to me the last few years. I don't really understand it. I bet it's because... But we don't have the conversation. A few years later, we have a big argument or we straight up fall out and we're not cool anymore. Because we both allowed an assumption to calcify into a false truth. And that false truth feeds the demise of our friendship, feeds the demise of a relationship, a romantic relationship, feeds into the fracturing of families. Don't let this happen to you. Have the tougher conversations. It might not be easy. It might not be fun. And either side may be clumsy. And sometimes it can get worse. But fear of it getting worse prevents the conversation that needs to happen from happening. Because if you just knew that that's not what was going on, that I was bothered about this, or I was feeling sad that day about A, B, or C, we wouldn't even have beef. And I want peace. I'm out. So that's, 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 a, that's a heavy point. Because that's, that's what happens. That's what happens. You you have an evil thought towards a brother or sister about something they may have done. Or it may have been something that happened a few years. It may have been something that happened a year ago. Y'all talked about it. Apologies were made. It was supposed to be peace. But then six months later, brother or sister do something. And you seem, you and you and your man like, see, I know he ain't forgive me. I know he ain't forgive me. See, he wouldn't have did that if he ain't forgive me. If he he wouldn't have did that, and but you never talk, you never go and talk to him again, because in your mind you like, well if, if if that talk didn't work, I ain't no sense of going and talk to him now, cause it ain't gonna work. So you just cre you recreated a problem that wasn't even there, and then time goes on, and before you know it, you something happened. He 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 actually a day come when he actually accidentally bump you or something. Like, what well, you nigga what you. And now it turns into now. Now it look like we some niggas on the street again, because you didn't hit, you didn't harbor on to a grudge about something that didn't happen. Get Sirach chapter three and verse uh, twenty four. I'm looking at that video. That could actually turn bad. Like, yeah, and that could turn into murder. Yep. that's probably that not not probably. I bet that's majority of why you see situations happen out here with our brothers. I bet that exact example that we just seen. A bunch of assumptions that grudge form, and then it's like, I want him to say something to me. Soon as he say something to me, I'm snapping. Yep. I'm waiting for some contention, some type of contact, so I could blow up because I know he got an issue with me. Yep. Yep. I read that. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse twenty-four. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. It says, many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Let's pull up, pull up the definition of opinion real quick. Pull up the definition of opinion. It says, many are deceived by their own vain opinion. When you roll like that in an assumptive spirit, you are deceived by your own opinion. You are deceived. So let's pull that up. Opinion, a view or judgment formed about something, not necessarily based on fact or knowledge. So it's the, this is the same thing as an assumption. 
a view or judgment formed without facts or knowledge. Meaning you didn't talk to, you didn't talk and get clarity. You didn't talk and find out if it's actually the case. You, 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 you made a vain opinion or in your mind, you made a vain fact. Oh, no, no, you didn't even make a vain fact in your mind. In your mind, you came to a conclusion that was factual. That's called delusion. Exactly. That's delusion. Yep. So, uh, for many are deceived by their own delusions. We'll use that. <laughs> many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Read. And an evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment. An evil suspicion. Let's pull up the definition of suspicion real quick. It says, and an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment. Evil suspicion. So, and that happens. A lot of, some people may be looking like, nah, them, them, that stuff ain't, nah, that stuff happened. The stuff, the, the examples I gave, as small as they seem, they actually happened. Those were actual things that I personally dealt with. Hey, that just came to my mind. Why, why you taught these crazy examples? Uh, I remember this back when I was on security. Brother come in with his bag. I had to search his bag because those were the rules. I got to search in his bag. All I know, see this brother evil. I'm like, wait, what the hell? What? <laughs> I have to search your bag. That's the protocol. How, why am I evil for searching your bag? Because you think in your mind that I have a problem with you. I didn't say nothing to you. Like, you just got into school. I didn't do nothing to you. I asked to search your bag just like everybody else. But this person that I'm, from my crazy experience that I had, this person don't come around. So you by yourself, and you play with the thoughts in your head. Then when you've been gone, then you come around everybody. Y'all yep. got a problem with me. Yep. I got to search my bag. No, it's just me. I'm the only one who bag you searching. And it stood and, and it stood and watched five other people get searched. But then when they get to them, these things and these are things that happen. And, and if you think about that, People like that, they really got to examine themselves because for you to be excessively presumptuous about others and what you think they may have against you, there's a reason why there's, that's like a freakish paranoia. Yep. You're constantly paranoid when you think somebody has something against you. You really need to examine yourself right. and what's going on in your life and what it is that you're doing mm -hmm. that is causing you to think a certain way against other people. That's a freakish an unnatural paranoia. You're insecure. You're insecure. You're not happy with yourself, so you try to put your unhappiness on everybody else and attribute it to them to make yourself feel better. So we, we pull, that, this, pull up that uh, definition. Suspicious. Having or showing a cautious distrust of someone or something. Uh, let's read some of them synonyms. A evil suspicion, a evil distrust. You think that we going to, you think in your mind, you think that somebody out to get you, somebody out to maliciously harm you. So because of that, it overthrows your judgment. Read them, uh, what's the name? Similar, doubtful, unsure, dubious, wary, cherry, skeptical, distrustful, mistrustful, disbelieving. Having reservations, apprehensive, cynical, jaundice, jaundice, yeah, jaundice. So with that, real quick, so read Sirach 3 and 24 once, one more time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 24. For many are deceived by their own vain opinions. You're, you're, you're deceived by your own vain opinion. You're deceived. You're living a lie. You're running with the lie that you created in your head. You, 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 lie, you lied to yourself so much that you believe it. That it's actually, it actually happened. Whether, even though you don't have no, you don't even have a, you don't even have a point of reference when you're asked, but, you, but something happened. But when you're asked, you have no tangible proof. Read. 
and an evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment. And an evil suspicion overthrown your judgment, your distrust. Because you come around, you don't trust. And even we even have even had situations where brothers come in and don't even be don't even be here for but congregate two, three times. It's like, hey, something wrong with Judah. Not a, not an individual, but the tribe, Judah. This is the northern and southern kingdom stuff. We had brothers coming, man, something wrong with y'all. Okay, what happened? No, it's just the spirit, y'all. It's just off. Okay, what did somebody did somebody do something to you? Like somebody say something to you? Did you say something to the leadership? Like what happened? No, nah, it's just y'all just I, I can't come until y'all get y'all spirit right. It, okay, so what did we do? So I'm saying, what did somebody do to you so that we can look into it and fix it so that we can get our spirit right? No, nah, y'all just need to get your spirit right. Okay, um, uh, all righty then. Uh, we'll see you on the other side, hopefully. I mean, well, they say it's a problem. <laughs> they say it's a problem, but they don't tell you what it is. Exactly. Like it's a secret. Right. So how how, how can how can the problem get solved if you don't tell us what it is? That's an evil suspicion, and it, it overthrown your judgment. Because now, because you have created a you have created an issue in your mind. Now you're not coming around, and it's not detrimental to us <clears throat> because we we keeping the commandments. The commandments say. It's a, a, on the Sabbath, is a holy gathering, a holy convocation. We're keeping it, but you're not because you say it's an issue, but then when we try to solve the issue, we say we try to, we try to find out what the issue is so that we can solve it. You're like, no, nah, y'all, you, you don't want to give either, either A, it ain't really no issue. You're just making it up. Or B, you, not, you, you just have no understanding. You don't know how to resolve conflict and build unity. And most of the time it's a hey, you just you just making some you just making some stuff up. But get Sirach chapter 40 and verse 2. This is the this is the same thing. We just read that definition of uh, suspicion. This popped in my mind. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 40 and verse 2. Their imagination of things to come, and the day of death trouble their thoughts and cause fear of heart. Now this is talking about somebody that's in the midst of sin and they you, you're in the midst of sin you, it's terror mess with your plague your mind so this is somebody that's read verse one let's read read it all because i want to i want to keep it in the proper context verse one great travail is created for every man uh-huh and in heavy yoke is upon the sons of adam for the day from the day that they go out of their mother's womb Till the day that they return to the mother of all things. So our life is full of trials. Full of trials. We gonna, our, we, this life ain't going to be a cakewalk. Our life is full of trials as long as we are on this earth, in this body. Read. Their imagination of things to come. Our imagination of things. When you wicked, your imagination of things to come, meaning destruction, burning in that lake of fire. Read. And the... Trouble their thoughts. Because you fear, you fear death because you, 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 you don't really know what's going to come after death. You fear it. Read. And cause fear of heart. And it causes fear of heart. That's similar to this, having a spirit of, of, of evil suspicion. Because you, you create something in your mind and because it, it, that, that, that distrust, because of that, now you... Your judgment is off because now you're treating your brother ill. You have, a Ill. you have ill feelings towards your brother. You have an ill will towards your brother or sister because of your evil suspicion. Because you evil and you're creating scenarios that ain't there. You're creating situations that ain't there. Now you're disrupting unity. You're disrupting the building of a nation because you're creating problems. You're being malicious. Now if you don't, if you don't end up stop coming in and leaving you going it, it's, it's gonna come a day where the most high gonna reveal you expose you before everybody and we and you have to get put out you have to get separated until you get yourself right so that you because the most high god is not gonna allow nobody to stop what he's doing in this earth raising up the nation of israel that's not gonna stop ain't no man gonna come in and stop this movement so it's either you get right or you hit the door um 
Y'all got something? I'm about to go to this. Go ahead. Uh, one scripture. Get Zechariah 8 and verse uh, 17. Because a lot of times we don't understand that that behavior is not acceptable in the eyesight of the Lord. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 17. Uh-huh. And let none of you an evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And love no false oath. For all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. Hold on, read it again. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. So start right there. It said, let none of you, none of us are supposed to imagine evil in our, in our hearts. Your heart is your mind. You're not supposed to be imagining evil about your brother or your sister. Notice it says, imagine. It didn't say something really happened between y'all. It said, imagine. That's that evil surmising. That's that evil suspicion. That's that, uh, what we got up here, uh, doubtful, unsure, skeptical, distrustful, mistrustful, disbelieving, all those assumptions and imaginary fairy tales you put in your mind, evil thoughts about your brother, stuff that's not even happening. God said you're not supposed to do that. Read. Love no false oath. Love no lies. Read. For all these are things that I hate. Say if the Lord. If you didn't know, now you know the Lord hates that. So you brothers and sisters that walk around like this, you must repent of that. God hates it. If God hates that behavior, if you love God, you're going to change it. That's it. Let me get it. You mind if I get a script? Go ahead. Uh, let me get Psalms chapter 19 and verse 12. Because spirits like this can happen to any one of us. It can happen to anybody. Right, like you read in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, where it says, not to trust your own heart or your thoughts, for it's desperately wicked. Right. Our minds, all our minds, our bodies are nothing. It's, this flesh is weak. So our hearts are always desperately wicked. But the thing is, you have to be able to catch it when it happens. So you can prevent and flee from sin and right. repent from it. Because the Lord is going to judge us based on our works, Okay. So even if that thought comes, we have to be able to be aware and cognizant of it and, and, and flee from it and take the proper steps so that we, our actions are justified and we have a pure conscience when it comes to our judgment day towards the Lord. Read that for me real quick. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Who can understand his errors? Or his sins. The reason why he does what he does or the reason why you think the way you think sometimes. The reason why a woman can just walk past you and you have a certain thought about her, like, damn, who can understand his errors? That's just like what we read in Jeremiah 17 and 9. Right. Who can know it? Come on, for the heart is desperately wicked or it's deceitful, right? Read on. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. So that should be all of our prayers. These are the things that we should be fasting for and praying for towards the Lord, asking him for him to cleanse our hearts from these faults, right? Read it again. Who can understand his errors? Uh-huh. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Because that's what a presumptuous thought is or an assumptive right. fault. It's secret. Nobody really knows it but you. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever seen it. It doesn't exist in real life. It's not reality. It's something that formed in your mind. Right. So at this place, at this time, it's a secret fault before you put it into action. Read on. Keep back thy servant also from, presum from presumptuous sin. You see that? Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins or evil thoughts. All right, read on. Let them not have dominion over me. Come on. Then shall I be upright. Then shall I be upright. Why? Because that's the spirit of charity. The scripture says that the spirit of charity thinketh no evil, and it is not vaunteth up, or it puffeth not up itself. Come on. And I shall be innocent from the great transgression. What transgression? Loving thy neighbor as you love yourself. Because if somebody had a thought against you, what would you want to thought? What would you have wanted? Somebody to come talk to you. Right. You'd have wanted somebody to come and express those issues with you. And so that you can work it out and you make good with your neighbor. You make good with your brother. Okay? But again, we have to be able to check these things as soon as they enter our thoughts. Okay? And that's that. That's that's what we have to do. We we have to make sure that our thoughts are filtered through the scriptures. We can't run with a thought. Get Psalms chapter ten and verse four. Get Psalms chapter ten and verse four. 
Hey, officer, while we we going over this topic, King Saul keep popping in my mind. Like he yep. he literally played with the thoughts in his head and yep. just went off. And you know what's heavy about that too? Because before that happened, the scripture said that the Lord sent an evil spirit yep. on Saul. Yep. And then he started having those evil thoughts about David, who was loyal to him. Right. Even when he was even when he was trying to kill him, he still was loyal to him. Read that. Psalms chapter 10, verse 4. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. And that shows that you are not trying to build unity. You have no intention on building unity. Zephaniah 2 and 1 says, gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. But you coming in here with the undesirable behavior. God is not in your thoughts. You have no, you, you, you just wake up and stay at home. Watch class, on, watch, watch online. Don't even come in here until you get your spirit right because God is not in your thoughts. You're not thinking about building unity. You're thinking about the streets. You still got uh, the, the gang life on your mind. We trying to get right and you trying to pull us back into the streets. From there, get uh, no, no, no. awesome. Read on. You yeah, gotta read, read, on, down, read on, bro. Read on, read on. <laughs> you gotta read down. Verse five: His ways are always grievous. His ways are always grievous. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's a hatred spirit in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's well, so? Who, 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 what happened? I'm telling you, it's a hatred spirit. You don't see it? I mean, in the streets of Chicago, yeah, I see this hatred, but right. in the body, what's going on? What's that? What happened to you? What somebody do? Now I'm telling you, open your eyes. Open your eyes. You can't see it. And then that same brother has the spirit or the, the reputation of being contentious. Exactly. Strife. So his ways yeah. is always grievous. Every yep. time you have an encounter with this brother, he always thinking you got something against him. Exactly. His ways are always grievous. Go ahead. <laughs> see? See? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Read on. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above, out of his sight. Your thy, it says thy judgments, so this is the most high judgments. It's, it says it's far above, out of his sight. This is a, a brother or sister that's so contentious. When you're sitting there telling them A, B, C, D is next, E, F, G. Man, it don't go like that. It's G, F, E, D. See, you on you looking at it wrong. Right. And it, hey, that's that's how it goes. Yep. They try to switch your words up, flip them upside down, put them inside out, and then put it back to you like you crazy. That it says, "Thy judgments are far above, out of his sight." Meaning he he will refuse. It goes back to the first part. It says, "The wicked through the pride of his countenance, he think he too high." For understanding. Mm -hmm. He too, he too above, he know too much. Ain't nothing you could tell him. Read. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. It, just listen to that. It says for, for all his enemies. Who do you think his enemies are? The ones that got a right man. Right. The one that's trying to lay, hey, no, nah, bro, you, 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 you veering off to wickedness. We trying to reel you in. No, nah, man, y'all know what y'all talking about. See, you trying to twist my words. I ain't say that. Well, you did just say that. You want me to play? The, you want me to play it back for you? I you you. I just repeated what you said. I just said it in plainer terms. You tried to run circles around my man. I said it plainly. Now you saying that's not what you said. Read. He had said in his heart, "I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity." This is the mindset of a Negro. Yep. This is what happens in many a council. Right. The mind of a Negro, you, the script, hey, let your yay be yay and your nay be yay, nay be nay. Hey, did you come in the door and throw the table on the floor? No, what happened was I came in, I came in, I took off my shoe, and then I pushed the table like this and it fell on the floor. <laughs> now, that, that, that's, I just made that up. That ain't actually happened. But that's, that's, what, bro, that's what brothers will do. Yep. They'll change it. And make it sound, they'll dumb it down and make it sound like they ain't, they ain't do what they, they said they did. 
But that's 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 what Israel do. But so uh, one quick verse is a solution. Um, Proverbs chapter sixteen and three. Proverbs chapter sixteen and three. If you got that spirit where every time somebody do something that is evil in your sight, every time somebody say something they said it too rough and they meant it to hurt your feelings. You touch it. You, 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 you got to strengthen your spirit. You can't take everything personal. Everything somebody say ain't personal to you. It may be a, it may be a person was out the spirit and they said something rash, but you can't take it personal. You got to be in the spirit to be like, to the scripture say, wink at ignorance. You got to, now if it's something that happened two, three, four times, then you say, you know what, let me go and talk to them. Let me pull my brother and sister to the side and see if it's something going on between me and them. And nine times out of ten, it's not. Nine times out of ten, it's eight. I heard X, Y, Z, no, you know what? I got these bills, my job stressing me out, and I'm, I'm sorry, I ain't mean it. I just, I, just, I, just been, I just been stressed out. And that'll be it. That'll be the end of it. But if you just running on, running on, running on, running on, like a run-on sentence, in your mind, running around and building a gate, building a, a, a privacy fence, like somebody got something against you, you the problem, not them, because they don't even know you got a problem. Read that. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Start at verse 1. Verse 1. The preparations of the heart in men and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Uh-huh. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord with the Spirit. says, the, all, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs your spirit. He weighs your motives. Why are you doing what you're doing? If you got an evil heart and you're creating scenarios and all of that, you evil, not, not nobody else. And if, and if you get corrected on it, you got to accept the correction. You got to see it as it is. You got to see it in your mind. You know what? I, might be, I may be off. Even if you don't see it right then and there. You know what? If my brother or my sister come in and telling me about this, you know what? Let me examine. Let me check it out. I don't see it right now, but let me examine myself and see if it's true. And if it's true, I'm going to repent. That's how, the, that's how you got to think. Read. Commit thy works unto the Lord. It says, commit your works unto the Lord. When you commit your works unto the Lord, meaning you commit yourself to applying the commandments, read. And thy thoughts shall be established. Your thoughts are going to be established. You're going to be applied. You're going to be able to apply charity. You're going to be able to not think evil about your brother or sister. You're going to be able to be, you're going to be able to not be not easily provoked, meaning you don't take everything personal that happened to you. Did I, did I finish reading 1 Corinthians 13? Dang, I'm tripping. Did I read the thing is no evil? Yeah. Okay, I did. I got it. I got the point. Uh, hey, what you just read actually goes right back to the precept that you just left in Psalms chapter 10, <clears throat> verse 4. We ain't going to get it. I'm going to just read it a little quick. It says, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God, or he, God will not establish his thoughts because right. he did, would not commit his works right. unto God. Yep. It says, God is, is not in all his thoughts. Right. So it's literally saying the same exact thing. So when God is not in your thoughts, you will not commit your works unto God. Right. Nor will he be able to establish them. Yep. But in the pride of your own countenance, you're going to go astray and do your own thing and do your own thing and that is wicked before the Lord. Right. So with that, we're going to conclude the class. I pray that you edified. Most high in Christ bless.